Hi and welcome back. In the last video I showed you how to make the bottom of our little project box and in this video I'll show you how to make the lid. So let's get started. So if we've got our model open and highlighted make sure we're in our part design workbench and then we'll create a new body by coming up here to the new body tool and clicking on that and that creates a new body in our model. Now you'll notice that the new body is in bold and that means that that body is now active to be edited. If I come to our original body, right click and select toggle active body, you can see that that body is now in bold <coughs> and the other one's not. So that one now is the one that we're editing. I can also turn them both off but in this case I want to edit this body, so I'm going to have that one in bold. Now we've got a lot of bodies here, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to come down, right click, come down to rename, and I'm going to call that box bottom. Just like that. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to use the F2 key, and I'm going to call that box lid. So there we go. So now we can start working on our box lid because we have it active. So I click on sketch to create a sketch tool and I'm going to put it on the XY plane again. Then I'm going to start creating my geometry. But immediately there's a problem because we can't see it. The reason we can't see it is because the sketch is sitting here underneath the box. The box is in the way. So we can get around that by one of two means. We can either come here to the, we're still in the, the sketcher workbench, come here to the model tree and select the box bottom which is in the way and just tap the space bar to hide it. Or we can come up here to the section tool and this will only be active while we're in this current sketch and what that does is hides everything between the drawing plane and the viewer. So we've got that hidden now Let's go ahead and draw our, our lid. Now last time I showed you how to create the fillets on the body using the fillet tool in the part design workbench. This time I'm going to show you the same thing but I'm going to use the filleting tool in the sketcher workbench. Now it seems a little superfluous to have two filleting tools but it's really not. You would use the one in the sketch workbench where you have uh, fillets of different radii. Um, whereas if you have a lot of fillets with the same radius, you would probably use the filleting tool in the part design workbench. And the advantage with that is that if you want to delete them all together or you want to change their radius all at the same time, you just use the one filleting tool in the part design uh, workbench. Whereas here, if we want to change just one fillet, we can change just one fillet. We don't have to change all of them. So there's different uses for what seems like the same tool. So I'm going to just give these all a radius of four millimeters and I'm going to make this lid the same size as before. That's going to be 50 and that's going to be 80 across there. Just make sure I get that selected that 80. All good. And then I'm going to put it in the center again. Same way that I did last time. So that's 25. Or I can do 80 on 2. Just like that. Alright. So there's our sketch all configured and closed and dimensioned. Let's create a pad. I'm going to make that six millimeters. But we have a problem, the box is still in the way. So this time I really am just going to hide that. All right, let's create uh, a sketch for our void in the, the top here. So I'll, I'll actually use the um, polyline tool for this. Just quickly go around and draw. Our profile. And 
none of these things are lining up the way they should of course so I'll just quickly straighten them all up and I'll throw some reference edges in because I'm going to need them to dimension my little void so, and I'll put some dimensions in so I'll make that four that's going to be four millimeters this one's four millimeters as well if you move the mouse while you're trying to select one of these points it'll move the point rather than selecting it and you only have to move it a little bit can be a little frustrating but there we go so we've got those edges all set now let's uh, define these points here make that 10 and this one not that one this one make that 10 as well and I'll just do the same all the way around here make them all 10 And last, last couple. If you click on something <clears throat> like you know, that edge, for example, and uh, just click away from it, right click, try again, click away from it, and it'll unselect. All right, that's fully defined. Let's just close that and make a pocket. Got to make that pocket four millimeters deep because I want a two millimeter thick wall and it's a six mil pad <clears throat> starting to look good all right so we need to define this lip around here and to do that I'm going to come here do a sketch throw a rectangle in here and again I'm going to fill it this way rather than using the part design workbench for no other reason than to uh, demonstrate the sketcher filleting tool and again I'm going to use some reference edges just pull that in there throw some reference edges on here like that and I'm going to make this dimension 2 0.1 millimeters and the reason I'm going to make it 2.1 is because the wall thickness on the box is 2 millimeters and if I make this 2 millimeters as well it's actually going to be an interference fit so I want it to have a little bit of a little bit of room better make that 2.1 not 21 alrighty and we'll give this these fillets a radius of two and that should leave us with just enough clearance I think of course if you print the thing and you find that uh, that's a little bit too tight still you can just come in and change these later on to 2.2 or something else all right so there we go pocket that and we've got a mistake that's not doing what I want to do the reason being is that it's it's going to remove when I define a pocket it's going to remove the inside here and leave the outside alone so we have to tell it that the bit around the edge is the inside so now we've got between this line and this line is the inside and everything else is the outside there's our pocket We'll make that two millimeters deep. All right, looking good. Let's go and quickly throw some fillets <coughs> on these edges. I'll make them two millimeters. I'll make them two and a half. 
What the hell? Let's make them three. Just go in and click these. Add them all together. Or add them all into the list, should I say? And I've got that. Face I don't want. That's alright. Just remove it. Add all these. Hmm, failed to create a fillet. And the reason for that is that this face is 6mm wide. Let's make that 2.5. Yeah, still doesn't like it. Oh, look at that. I've got a face. Not an edge. All right. Okay, but if I try to make that three, let's just do that now. It won't like it. And the reason it doesn't like it, set that back to 2.5, is because if I make these fillets three millimeters in diameter, that's six millimeters there, three plus three is six, that face will have zero width. And FreeCAD won't allow that. It has to have a little face in there. So if you really, really finicky about it and you want it to be as thin as possible you can make it 2.99 or something like that and it'll create it but in there is a tiny little face whatever it doesn't really matter okay so let's throw a chamfer on the bottom just like that make that two millimeters yeah it looks pretty good all right Let's put some holes in there. Go to the bottom here. Select the bottom surface. Put a sketch on it. And I'll put a hole in there. I'll also use these reference edges again. Set that. I think that was six millimeters. Find out in a second. Six millimeters. All right. Now we're going to put a hole in there. This hole, I'm going to make it for fun. I'm isometric, doesn't really matter. Three millimeters. It's going to be through all, and I'm going to make this one countersunk. And the correct dimension here is 3.79 millimeters. Um, you can look that up online to get the correct uh, dimensions for. Um, a counterboard or a countersunk um, regular metric screw hole or imperial if that's your thing whatever floats your boat so there's our hole looks pretty good now I need four of those so I'm going to do something a little bit more advanced I'll select that hole I'll come up here to the multi transform feature tool click on that then I'll right click here add a linear pattern. I'm going to go on the horizontal e a sketch axis. Now these holes need to be 80 millimeters minus 6 minus 6. So 6 in from either side. And our hole's not there. Why is it not there? Well that's because it was actually putting the hole out here. So if I click reverse direction that'll put it back in the right place. So click OK down here do the same thing again on the vertical sketch axis and this time it's going to be 50 minus 6 minus 6 and we have to reverse it as well again and that's because the positive axis is up up okay there we go and that's it that's our little lid let's bring the bottom back in hey, it's not in the right place is it all right so let's get these assembled together. We'll come to the lid, highlight that, select transform. The transform tool allows us to move things around in all three axes, but also allows us to rotate around all three axes as well. So I'm going to rotate this 
180 degrees like that. And you can set the, um, the rotation increment here. It's currently 15 degrees. So six of those will make it 180. And the translation is one millimeter. And to get that reasonably accurate, I'm going to come in here, select the front, do that. Or I could select the top, just line these up, just like that, and click OK. And here's our little lid and it's in position. Now another thing I'm going to quickly do as well is I'm going to add a part into this model to contain the box. So I'll simply create that part. I'll give that a name. I'll call it um, Project Box. Project Box. There we go. And then I'll just drag these two into it like that. So we've got our box lid and our box bottom in our project box. Alrighty, so that's it for this video. In the next video I will create some countersunk screws to go in there to hold the box together. And uh, that will complete the, uh, the basic tutorial on this little project box. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you got something out of it and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.